Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to take a look at uh, some Forex trading, some Forex charts together in this webinar and uh, discuss what could be interesting for today, the 19th of May. But before we do that, first of all, a quick introduction here of some important slides. Like the fact that this webinar is intended for a global audience, it may not be uh, suitable for everyone to find out more about that and other information and details. Please visit admiralmarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity. Also, trading for exchange and other global financial markets and products is considered higher risk. It may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent uh, financial advisor for more information on that. Please realize that this webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer. Alrighty. So today we're going to take a look at trend lines. Well, trend lines are great tools, but they uh, sometimes are not usable on a chart. So when we bump into trend lines, we can discuss it and use them. But I will not necessarily be only using trend lines. We'll just go pair by pair from your dollar to pound and then see if we can use trend lines. If not, then we'll just use other tools that could help us understand the chart a bit better. All right, but trend lines are great. Uh, they uh, do require us to put them on the chart, which means that sometimes we could make better or worse trend lines. And in that regard, moving averages, for instance, are always easy because they are adjusted as the bars are placed on are, are on the chart or, or new bars are shown on the chart. That goes automatically. Trend lines we have to uh, do ourselves. But still, they show great support or resistance points. They show good break and bounce spots. They are good decision levels, basically, like, okay, I'm waiting for price to get here or here before I want to trade it. They could be good trend lines as well, trend channels, and they could indicate ranges too. So it's just a great support and resistance tool. All right, so with that said, Let me head over here to get a look at the economic calendar together. Tomorrow we have FOMC statement, which of course is always a big one. And uh, or typically this time I would say May, we're getting closer to perhaps uh, interest rates. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see what the FOMC is saying. Today we have CPI, German ZW economic sentiment, Euro CPI, building permits. So we have the usual uh, event, but anyhow, the, the, the nearest one for us is pound CPI and some other long list of uh, news events here, ranging from PPI to uh, RPI, CPI, etc. Alrighty. So let's take a look at the euro dollar weekly chart. This is, we of course had last week another weekly candle close, and if you are curious about what I think of the uh, weekly open that you can always find out by looking at Monday around 10, 9 UK time. Go to Wave Analysis on the AM's Admiral Market site right here and you should see a weekly Forex overview, right? And then there should be a video. So yesterday I was saying in that video, that the euro dollar is an uptrend and we should see a continuation to the upside, but we might see a retracement to the downside in all probability first. I was pretty convinced about that. And uh, indeed, we're getting the downside, the retracement of last week's bullish candle. So obviously, we had a great downtrend. Now we had a several weeks now breaking that bottom and we're seeing the bigger retracement happening. And all of these bullish, all of these weekly candles are bullish last week too with a strong close. Last week, near the high, pretty decent candle. So ultimately, I wouldn't expect the uh, the low of that candle to be broken. Definitely not more than 25 pips. So 111, 111, 25, the ultimate bouncing spot on the euro dollar to the upside. But it could happen earlier too, like 112, 
25, which was a resistance, for instance, here as a 23.6 fib, or 112.50, a round number, kind of a quarter number. Does anyone know the uh, quarter theory by any chance? Is that familiar? There was a book written about it, and um, the idea that quarter levels are important as well. Not only like 250s, but 25s. You see the euro dollar indeed respecting often 112.75 or 112.25, the 25s and 75s. Not only within the 100 pips, but within the 1,000 pips, like 112.50, for instance. So those can be bouncing spots. If we put a fib on uh, this entire downside, you can see that we maybe pause at 23.6 fib a bit. Ultimately, the next fib in line is the 38.2 at 117. In the long term, I'm expecting price to get there. So ultimately, something like this, what we're seeing now, a retracement back to support to find a bounce for further upside up to the 117. And then again down like this with a downtrend continuation seems the most likely to me. Then we most likely can put a trend line connecting the bottoms. And when we break that trend line, <clears throat> we should have a good short, a long-term short for probably with target as parity. So eventually the downtrend should continue. And, uh, but at the moment, I'm expecting this trend line to break basically. And this, uh, the, well, there depends how you draw it. This trend line has already been broken like this, a bit more steeper trend line. So ultimately, for this week, a long up to 38.2 fib as a target seems the most uh, realistic trade setup that could be interesting for today or this week, right? Now the FMOC, of course, could have a, a bit of a unknown effect. Technically speaking, this is what I would expect. Fundamentally, we never know if, if they match. Sometimes the fundamentals could be so volatile that they kind of break the technical expectations. I think if the fundamentals are aligned with technicals, they are typically very, uh, very connected. <clears throat> if the fundamentals are kind of more neutral, then eventually the technicals will take over it. That's, that's how I see it, at least. Some people might disagree, but that's okay. So bearing a FMOC that is... Uh, very, very strong because that, of course, would create uh, dollar strength. I'm expecting your dollar at the end of this week to be at least a doji or at least a bullish candle, which means that upside uh, is preferred. Personally, I, I would like to go long at 112.50, which is a bit lower. So let's let me take off this fib now, this retracement fib. That's for the retracement target, but. And now we know that that's a bit more further from now. And let me fib this weekly candle. And uh, we see price hitting the 112.75 area already, which is already a significant uh, um, retracement. And from a long-term perspective, already pretty close to that 112.50 level. Anything within 25 pips of a major level like that, and we see the, the low was 112.77, is already within striking distance. Technically, if if you're you know a trader that's not so um, precise, perhaps you know doesn't care about maybe 20, 30 pips in the long term. Then along right here with the stop loss at 110.90 for 200 pip stop loss with a target at 117 would be a setup. It's about 200 pip stop loss with the 400 target. Now that's certainly not a setup that everyone would 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 enjoy because it's a, a pretty long term setup and it's a pretty big stop loss. So we can zoom into lower time frames to see if there's a, a different configuration that uh, could be easier to trade first for for many, but this from a weekly candle perspective, I think makes sense and has a good perspective. And the target would be the minus 618 target. Now, realize that 
the 117 is the long term target. No, the long is now or at 112.50 with a stop loss at 110.90. But this is a long term setup. The main target is 117 or let's say 116.75 to uh, give a bit of space. To the yeah to, to give a bit more accommodation and not aim for the very last pip because sometimes price doesn't reach that last one or two pips so you don't typically do not want to aim for the very very last pip so if you have 117 as a target especially if it's a long term trade I would recommend going some 25 pips lower than that like 11670 probably the Alternative target would be actually 115.40. And the reason is because we have a resistance spot here, this resistance line, plus and minus 272 target. 115.50 could definitely be a spot where price hits and retraces back down before moving up again. So if you don't want to live to, through a second pullback, then aiming for a bit more conservative 115.40 makes sense. So let's zoom in now. That's just the long-term picture, in my opinion. And see if we can find something else. Alrighty, so what do we see here? We see, this was an FOC, I think it was, this spike up. And that was the first clue that the downtrend was over and we got a deep retracement, hit minus 272 target, retracement, hit minus 618 target, and now we're tracing back down, right? When looking at the daily chart, we definitely see higher, higher highs and higher lows. So when we take this fib off, and we can see some kind of channel like this. But we also see the potential for price to perhaps bounce off a shallower line like this. And when connecting the tops, we see perhaps that the resistance was a bit fading, showing some sign perhaps of a falling wedge, or sorry, rising wedge as, as well a bit at the very end here. So, so we got a big, strong uh, daily candle um, at uh, yesterday, sorry, at that 114, uh, 115 resistance. And if we put a fib on the very last swing, high swing low, like here, uh, this, the same as the weekly candle, you can see that the 61.8 fib is the 112.60. We just missed that by a few pips. So perhaps taken out, perhaps still open. If I look at the four hour chart, you can see that there's a potential for uh, a bit of a bounce perhaps at one point because we had a, a long run down. So what could happen is, Something like this, for instance, and then move up. That can always happen. And when we take a look at the hourly chart, you can see we're already in a, in a downtrend, in fact. And uh, there's the potential here for two things, I would say. It's either a triangle and then a break to the upside, a spike up, bull flag, continuation, uh, some kind of correction zigzag, but then still one more move down to 61.8 and then higher. So any trade that is taken, I would say, a stop loss below 112.50 is, is probably at the moment the minimum. Because even if it does show bullishness, I would still be leery of the fact that it could retrace and still hit that 61.85. So as long as the stop loss is below a decent amount below 112.50, probably 112.15, uh, is okay. Even more safe for probably 111.90 because this 112 level plus this bottom would be at the moment the uh, the I would say an okay stop loss, right? With a sh with a long right now, in fact, or obviously even better if it gets lower. The lower the better. Now this trend line is maybe a bit. Um, not sure if it's let me take a look at this line one second 
It's maybe not very neat, actually, because it cuts through a lot of candles here. It's just a rough channel. I wouldn't consider that at the moment to be very important. Let's take it off because it's bias. It's giving us a bit of a bias in the sense that it looks like a bouncing spot. But uh, it's a bit of a rough trend line. A rough trend line is when, when you have something on a daily chart, for instance, that looks pretty accurate when it's connecting bottoms or tops. But if you zoom in many time frames, you see that the trend line is cutting through uh, substantial parts. So when that happens, you want to be careful not to use it too too seriously because if you're using a trend line on a higher time frame and you zoom in two times, the accuracy of that trend line is diminishing. So you always want to keep using trend lines either one time frame higher or one time frame lower or on the time frame you use it. Because if you use a trend line on the hourly and then you use it, you put a trend line on the hourly and you use it on the one minute chart, those two worlds are so far apart from each other that um, you know it, it, it's not so, uh, um, it, it loses the kind of connection. So we are getting the retracement that I was hoping for down to 112.50, and we're only about 10 pips away. And we're continuing with the downtrend here on the hourly. So another way would be to just wait how price reacts to 112.50. I mean, definitely price is speeding up now. Um, so, you know, there's always the potential to, uh, to wait and see how it reacts to 112.50. If you, if you like the 112.50 a lot, if you like the, the FIB and the upside, then a market order right at 112.50 or now are options. With a stop loss, at least below one, at the moment, I would say actually at the very minimum below 112, but probably even better below 111.30. 30 at the moment still because there's prices still falling as we speak so once we have a, a bit of a uh, confirmation of a bounce here for instance you see a couple of hourly candles like this three four five of them and not being able to break this bottom then a tighter stop loss is more doable all right now what happens if price uh, does march lower because we are seeing some bearish momentum. Uh, the next support levels, I would say, are 112. And at the very max, I would say 111.30, right? All of this is support levels. So if 112.50 doesn't hold, 112, 111.50, 111.75, all of them are potential support levels. So those could still give bouncing spots, right? Now, this downside today uh, should, I mean, tomorrow we have FOC, so by tomorrow things should be probably a bit uh, more calmer, I would say, and uh, the downside, I would Yesterday, I was thinking that the downside should happen by Wednesday. Let me say it this way. So we re already reached the target by today, uh, which was needed because of FOSC. And uh, we kind of fulfilled already a 250 pip fall from 115 to 112.50. So the question is, will 112.50 be a bouncing spot? Normally, it is. And if not, then um, we could see a further fall down to retest basically the next support levels here at 111, the very max 110, which is the next kind of psychological round level, right? But uh, 110 is quite deep. That would be the bottom of this channel. But I wouldn't, I mean, if, if one uses a stop loss there, it's even probably perhaps a tad safer, but uh, it's getting a bit wide or a bit, um, a bit, yeah, too, too long. So at this moment, the problem is with today at the moment is that it is the start of the London session. So we have to see how this reacts. It seems very uh, full of momentum at the moment. So at this point in time, probably better to see how the uh, the first hour of London closes at the top of the hour. I would say. 
you sometimes see it false kind of head fake at the very beginning if uh, if it would be close to the end of london session i would say um it would be great to wait for a pullback like this and then buy it on the dip but because we have the whole london session still ahead of us um it's going to be interesting to see what type of day it is because sometimes when the euro dollar starts a certain movement especially around 10 a.m it just keeps going slowly but steadily so it has a head fake at the beginning and then kind of makes that twist like that so that could be this as well but what I don't like too much is the the big bar here at the moment. But sometimes it happens, you have a head fake and then the rest of the day is up like this or you have a head fake and the rest of the day is down. But typically these bars are not 85 pips in, in size. they're typically smaller. So the size of the bar is making me uh, a bit more cautious. So I would say keep an eye on the one hour and four hour um, bars. Maybe even the four hour the better one. But both, keep an eye on both of them because I think that for the moment, probably looking for some kind of candlestick weakness, perhaps even on the one hour chart, I would say, wait for at least five bars that don't break this low. And on a four hour chart, that would have to translate in some bullish candle at least. A strong bullish candle with a close near the high. That probably could be the best for the moment. In the uh, long, from an Elliott wave perspective, five waves could be finished. In that regard, 111 is a 38.2 fib, and 23.6 fib is the 112.50. So that's why I think 112.50 is a bouncing spot because of the 23.6 fib. But it could be a bounce after which we do see a retest back to 38.2, after which we see an upside, something like that. This is something we often see in uh, in Forex, right? Something like that. So there's nothing wrong with looking for a bounce at the 23.6 Fib as long as we realize that um, there could be weakness at 114.75 or 115.50 before reaching the long-term target. And perhaps even a deeper retracement down to the 38.2 fib. Now, if the four hour bar does close bearish and uh, has, a, has a strong close pretty near the, high, uh, the, near the low, sorry, in that case, we could be breaking to the 112.50. And then we could see an acceleration down to 111 within today and tomorrow. And this just keeps pushing lower and lower until we reach this level. And that could be then the bouncing spot. It's always this game between momentum and uh, support or resistance that would we get a break or bounce. 112.50 is a break or bounce spot. It seems more likely for me to, to see a uh, bounce. But uh, they're not called bouncer break spots for nothing. They obviously can do both. So I'm still inclined to the upside, obviously, in the long term to 117. But the question is from what spot and when could be the best moment. And um, with the momentum, could be better to wait a bit. And if it, did, if it does close like this, or if it closes with a bit more wick, at least half the candle has to be wick for me to consider it a bit of a, uh, a bullish bounce. Uh, if it's within a quarter 
if the close is within a, within a quarter of the low, I would say it's a strong close to the downside. And if it's between 25 and a half, it's probably more neutral. Also, one hour chart will be important, especially now with the big candle like this. I want to see five to six candles not breaking this low before looking for a hook back for a long. Now, the pound dollar, I was also expecting the, for those that were looking at wave analysis perhaps uh, today. Uh, I was already saying, sorry. Uh, let's see, your dollar bearish candlestick pattern signals early reversal. Um, that was also actually valid for the pound dollar. Let's take a look. Here, completing kind of uh, the wave A of a five wave and now expecting that retracement, right? So expecting downside to kind of complete a correction. So this B basically uh, means that we could see also with the, uh, the pound dollar some correction first before upside, especially with the pound dollar, that correction could be a bit deeper than uh, the euro dollar I was thinking because of the fact that we have space down to 115, 155, sorry, before a major support level is, is reached. That's this top. That's the psychological round number. That's this top. And uh, also a FIB number, I think. If we put a FIB on the weekly candle, let me take a look. 155 is this top, obviously, and this top. But there was something else. If we move the fib from here to here, not really. There was something else then. Anyhow, it's close to fibs, obviously, but that's not the answer I was looking for. Perhaps it was the weekly candle. Uh, let's see, yeah, 78.6 fib and 61.8 fib. So 155, 155.50, anywhere in there could be the bouncing spot for the pound. So this has a bit more space, I would say, at the moment. So the downside on the pound dollar today, I think, makes more sense. I think today the pound dollar should reach that level before FMOC, otherwise it's a bit too late. So personally. I like to pound short a bit more, in fact, at the moment. We have pound news, but after that, there's plenty of space still for downside. Perhaps looking for this four-hour candle yet again, looking at this four-hour candle to see if it closes uh, bearish, for instance, could be a short looking for that 155.50 as a target, which itself could be then a bouncing spot again for upside. Justinus is mentioning uh, pivot points theory. Let's see. M3 predicts M1. M3 predicts M1. Let's see. And R3 is 114.50. R1 is 111.30. I'm expect I was expecting about some one twelve fifty because of the quarters theory. Um, that also was the same theory I used to expect this a downside from one fifteen and the lack of uh, of of a break of one fourteen seventy five. Uh, but you know not every quarter is necessarily respected. Um, but you do. It's an interesting theory. Uh, it gives three days, basically, for price to 
to accomplish a quarter, let's say from 110 to 112, 25, sorry, from 110 to yeah, 112, 50, excuse me, from 112, 50 to 115. If it doesn't do that in three days, then it's taking too slow. Um, so that was the that was the main reason that plus a lot of resistance here as well, a lot of confidence. But I personally don't know the pivot points theory. But 111.30 also from a fit point of view does make sense. So at this moment, I would still say let's take a look at this four-hour candle. Because sometimes, although this bar is indeed sizable, sometimes there is that head fake. But it's difficult to imagine with such a big bar. But still, the sentiment sometimes at the beginning of the day, there's, you know, there's a sentiment given sometimes with a bar like that. And the... It's done on purpose so that the rest of the day is up. It sometimes happens, quite often I would say, but yeah, this is a big bar, so it makes it a bit more toss up now. Say, so take a look at this, at this, uh, at this candle. But in, I do agree with you that if this level does break with a good close, that 111, 111, kind of 30 would be definitely the next zone to think about. It's called a quarters theory. There's a book about it. I forgot who the author author was actually. It's um, Ilian Yotov. It uh, to be very honest, it was interesting but a lot of things that I kind of kind of quickly went through because that they didn't really provide me anything new but this particular part was I think still worth the uh, the, 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 the read I, although I did skip some parts because um, you know it was too kind of too familiar for me but it was interesting how he approached that uh, and how he gave importance to those round levels. Uh, yeah, the 155.50 down to 150, 155, 155 to 155.50. But that's the bouncing spot. But in the meantime, after the news event, down to that particular level, we could still see continuation. I wouldn't be too worried about the 55. We could see a bounce though there. So, you know, there could be something like Downside, bounce, continuation. So the 55th could be a bouncing spot, but I wouldn't say the main bouncing spot. Now, the bearish momentum at the moment on lower time frames might seem like, how can we even think about an upside bounce? But if I look at the weekly candles and price action and impulse, then this bearishness, on average, should prove to be turn out to be at least uh, some kind of retracement and some bullish bounce we should see uh, this week. But it might not be today. That's the thing. In the long term, um, pound dollar is also at this moment an upside, a bullish impulse. But the difference was that before the pound dollar, I think, reaches its main bouncing spot, it has a bit more space to the downside. Whereas uh, at the moment, the euro dollar is at a bouncing spot, I think, or has a potential to be, the pound still is a bit away from it. Ultimately, both, though, I expect to have a bouncing spot and to continue with the bullish march. Both have, uh, both have bullish candles impulse at the moment. So in that regard, they're the same. In the long term, they're the same. There's just a slight difference, let's say, in uh, before they reach their turning spot, I would say. That's all. But if I look at both weekly candles, they're strong, good-sized candles. Uh, many, typically, on average, we should see a bounce there. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a bounce that leads to a 1,000-pip rally, of course. 
but at the very minimum we should see a bounce and if we have failure then the weekly candle could still end up negative this week but something like this down up down should happen at the minimum so somewhere here is a good spot because if because then we at least get the bounce or if it's in the best scenario this happens down up down up and the candle ends up closer somewhere here so both are up with the uh, when looking at the long term also monthly charts so dollar yen is a, is a bit different it's in a consolidation weekly candle is very small and uh, this triangle could be completed soon, but it would have to break at least above 120.25 right here. I don't expect to break below 118.50. So these two levels are important, 118.50, 120.25. A break above 120.25 could be a breakout trade with a long-term uptrend continuation. Any move down to retest 119, 118, 75, 119, 25, 119, 50 could be the end of this triangle and debouncing spot before an uptrend continues. There's a pretty good uh, probability that it could happen. That this correction, one more correction down could be the very last correction to complete the A part of a triangle. And A parts of tri uh, sorry, E parts of triangle. And E parts of triangle are very lucrative because if you manage to catch close to the turning spot, you got a relatively tight stop loss plus a lot of potential. So wave E's of triangles are very, very interesting because of that R to R potential. In this case, along at 111.25 with a stop loss at 118.40, is about 80, 85 pips but there is potentially all the way space up to the next resistance level i don't know that's i think somewhere up in here 124. so you got about you have potential from up to close to 500 pips there. So I'm very curious if it can make one more dip down. Maybe 119.25 is a bit too tough. 119.50. 119.50 seems more doable as a retracement with 118.40 as a stop loss. The alternative would be to break to take the, the break of this resistance. But then the risk is getting higher. Although the stop loss could be put here instead. At 118.70, 80. But still, risk is, is bigger upon the break. Entry is here, stop loss is here. So it would be nice if we get a a respect for this trend line and a move down. The trend line is connecting several spots, several resistance levels, and the bottom is connecting several spots. So we're in this triangle on the daily chart, as you can see. So this last dip down should not break this, this triangle, should not break the bottom, and should turn before hitting that level or going through that level. So one trade could be here upon the turn or and or upon the break. All right, let's take a look at the others. Maybe quickly still at the pound. Do I expect the cable to resume the downtrend after 161? Uh, either 159. 158.75 is a 50 fib. Or 
or one sixty. Let's see, one sixty two ish, one sixty two fifty. This is sixty one point eight fib. Any of these fibs, not this one. Any of these fibs could be uh, heavy resistance level. Um, to be honest, I think that the 50 or 61.8, both are probably equally likely. I don't really have a strong favorite for, for any one of those two. Both have resistance levels. Here's a bit of a mini top. Here's a, a bottom. Here's some resistance spot as well. So perhaps uh, a deeper move up to 162.50 could be a bit more likely based on that. But both are resistance and uh, bouncing spots. Maybe if we put a fib from here to here, let's take a look. One sixty seventy. One fifty nine. And now both both could be uh, bouncing spots. Long term, the cable is always a uh, uh, an interesting one because it uh, kind of does always the unexpected. But yes, I do expect downside. I do expect the pound to follow the euro dollar in its downside at these resistance spots. Indeed, but the question is how much. The euro could weaken more than the pound. It could be a, a, a big difference. So how far this downside will go, I think we got probably two main targets. It's either uh, roughly actually somewhere in this zone here, the bottom basically, maybe double bottom or some kind of weakness, maybe even between 145 and 150, somewhere there. Kind of like this, upside. Hit the resistance, move down, and then and then up again like that. Or if we do break lower, then there is a, a chance we can go to the target, which is 138. But uh, it will depend on the momentum and how much the dollar is able to to strengthen. It'll be interesting to see I, that. I think we'll, whether we get that much of a deep move. Will also depend, obviously, a bit on fundamentals. How much, how how aggressively the Bank of England moves, and how aggressively the Fed moves. But I think that euro weakness in the long term is a, is a bit more sturdier and has more potential. That's why I think with the euro dollar we will break the bottom of 105 and go to to parity this year. Alrighty, let's take a look at the, the pound and yen crosses, and we'll take a look at the pound and euro odd. Well, we got the zigzag basically here. We can take a look at the dollar cat too, definitely, and uh, kind of surpass the target even. But we do definitely see big wicks here on the daily chart. So similar to uh, to the other pairs we've seen, is this going to be some kind of retracement, corrective point, for instance? 
But looking at the oscillator, um, there is strong upside. Let's take a look at the difference between the pound dollar and the pound yen. And you can see that um, the pound yen is even stronger, although the pound dollar does have enough strength to make it the strongest AO bar. So there's no divergence, which is another signal that the upside is probably not over because otherwise there would be at least a single divergence on the four hour, four hour chart. And that is divergence that we do have on the euro dollar though. So that could be a reason why perhaps uh, the uh, euro is a bit weaker than the pound as this last upside gave divergence in fact. So maybe in that in that case, uh, there's a bigger chance that this will end up as a, as a big bearish candle. And we could see a retracement of this bearish candle Maybe now up to 112.50, which could be a resistance spot for downside. That seems to be a bit more likely when we look at divergence and uh, the current space in it. So perhaps 112.50 will be broken and we could see something like this occur. All right, so keep an eye on this uh, four hour uh, candle. The pound yen even has a stronger AO. So from that point of view, upside seems more likely, but the question is after a dip or after a immediate continuation for the moment this is kind of like a triangle or a rectangle which is typically bullish like that so let's take a look otherwise if it does retrace lower obviously a fib from here to here would be handy and the 38.2 fib or the 50 at around 185 would definitely be something to to look for let me now move into lower time frames. Hang on. Alrighty. Or let me check one thing on the daily chart still. Yeah, looking at the uh, looking at the amount of days that we've gone sideways, I do think that a retracement deeper seems likely. But then too, an upside continuation also equally likely. Probably 185 could be a serious bouncing spot. Alrighty, looking at the four hour chart and hourly chart. The green and blue green line uh, are is the 21 EMA moving average, high, low, and close. So a break below this fractal Break below 187.25, could see that acceleration down to 185, but it's definitely going against the trend. Eurian is falling even more because of the euro. Let me clean up this chart. All right, despite the downside at the moment, still want to be careful for the weekly low. So we got a good trend line break right in here. Let's zoom into um, using the Camarilla and take a look at the pivot points. It's a pretty sizable bar. The 
it would have been a good trade for uh, for the moving average and Camarilla breakout below L3. In fact, today, moving averages were aligned. Didn't look at that beforehand, but would have been a good one, a good example. But uh, at this moment, I would say there's really nothing to to do. I would still wait because it's moved so much that and it's still right in front of support that it doesn't make sense to uh, to trade, I think, at the moment or to look at it. I would want to see a bit more candles to uh, either to just to see how it reacts at this point, the next few hours, because at this moment, with such a big daily candle already behind us, I uh, wouldn't want to trade it. But there definitely could be some downside continuation, especially if the 15-minute chart is so impulsive, we uh, we could see something like this, some correction, and then a continuation. If that happens and we break a uh, support line, it could be an interesting trade. Euro is about the same, but it's just in a big kind of wacky little range. Let's take a look at the pound odd. A bit of a slow mover at the moment. Ultimately, it didn't really do its best to uh, to get very far from this uh, triangle we talked about before I had uh, a week off last week. It, uh, it did break, pull back and bounce, but the bounce hasn't been too enthusiastic at the moment. Can it go sideways? So it would be interesting probably to take a look at this trend line here, see if we can break that. That could mean a continuation of the original breakout. Obviously, if it does push below 195, then we're getting some failure. Okay, we'll take a look at pound and then we can take a look at uh, dollar cat. Pound is breaking this trend line here. Oh, one second. There we go. Alrighty, uh, this trend line. Kind of a bit of a rising wedge pattern here that we had. This is the fourth day that we haven't broken this top. So we're getting closer to a moment that a retracement lower seems more likely. Let me take a look at this low one second. Yeah, this looks bearish to me. Looks like we're breaking these, this rising wedge. The fact that that we had a weakness here, kind of like an impulse, a slow grinding kind of correction that wasn't able to break this top. Looks like we're going to get a, uh, at minimum, an ABC zigzag, I would say. So a target of uh, 206.50, 205, minus 272, minus, two six, minus 618 targets look good to me. And a short could be from, for instance, if we get a zigzag here to correct this fall, uh, 2.120 to 2.1160 to 2.12, probably the most likely zigzag moment moments, right? The stop loss would have to be above the break of the rising wedge here at 2.12. Sixty 
70 and target would be as I said 20650 to a seven to a six sixty that's a lot of pips on the pound ceiling but it does move a lot let's see Buren says that uh, yeah New Zealand had good inflation expectations so it's a good start but not all too sure at the moment. Well, I didn't have a lack of momentum to the upside looking at the uh, oscillator, that's true. But the daily is rounding up here a bit. It's a pity that's only the second one at the moment. And it's the fourth day, so it could be a short, perhaps it's a bit on the early side. That is true. Could be better maybe to wait um, till tomorrow, see what the, today ended up. If the news event today with the pound brings it up to here, and we, I mean, there is a good candlestick there that shows exhaustion, then I think it still could be worth a short at that spot, because then we could see something like a, a zigzag. To the downside like that. So that's something I would still consider for today uh, after the news event. If we don't get that, that particular sequence, then maybe better to wait for the end of the day indeed. We can take a look again tomorrow. Just remind me and we'll take a look. This is one, two, three. This is the fourth or third day. Let me take a look. The fourth. So we actually need tomorrow as well, in fact. But anyhow, if today is bearish, a golfing twin like this, it will say something about uh, the most likely, yeah, the most likely condition that the upside here is is a decent chance it's finished. Dollar cat. Let's take a look at uh, some of these cats. Such as the dollar cad, let me try to find it. Uh, forgot where it was, more to the right. Alrighty, there we go. Several weeks we had, uh, let's see, some smaller kind of uh, candles here, not all too, 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 or more sideways going candles, I should say. And now we're trying to break through that. So there could be some, some dollar rally against the cat or some cat weakness perhaps. We do see the dollar, of course, beating the euro at the moment, and we see it the same with the cat. From this point of view, looks like we're trying to break through this 121.60. If we do, it looks like a breakout trade on the on the daily chart, in fact. With the stop loss below this bottom, that could be a breakout trade. Right, because you can see we broke these bottoms, we had some downside. But from a daily perspective, if we break through that resistance spot, 112.60, 121.60, sorry, then uh, we could see the breakout with the stop loss here. It could be a, a daily swing trade to the upside. Already. Uh, otherwise, I don't have much to add. I mean, it's clear that uh, there was a downside, but it seems to be rounding up at the moment. 
Here too, we had some divergence between these bottoms. So it looks like we're having a, a breakout to the upside. So it's tradable like that on the daily chart. If we zoom into lower time frames, maybe a different kind of configuration is possible. Let's take a look. We're using Camarilla, uh, let's see, we can use the H3 with the L3 stop loss, stop loss below the L3, to target the H5 at 123.25. 122.50 could be a big level, we know it's a quarter level, we know it's uh, the monthly pivot point, it's also a weekly R2 and H4. That could be a serious level to uh, to reckon with, which is not too far from now. So if we zoom in here to the 50-minute chart again, an entry at 121.60 after breaking the stop, oh, after a break, pull back down to 121.60. Let's see, a stop loss would be 121.20. It's about 40 pips. Target 122.50. That would be 90. That's okay. So if it breaks, that's fine, but we need a pullback after that. H3 short is here. It's pretty big Camarillo levels because of a big daily candle yesterday. Let's see, why, um, why is minus 272? Why not minus 38.2? Why, why 38 27.2 is minus 38.2 is, can't find a relationship ah, between the Fib and the number. Uh, let's see, I have to trail back now for a second. I got it. I got these numbers ultimately from my mentor. Um, and I'm struggling to think about the relationship at the moment. Let me think about it. I have to let me take a look. At uh, the number here. To be honest, I don't know at the moment. Let me look it up and I'll get back to you because I have to play around with some numbers probably. I, I wouldn't know at the top of my head at the moment. I've used it so long and so often that minus 618 is straightforward obviously, but minus 272 is more conservative target as we know, aiming for the lower fibs. It could be a square root of something for instance um, because these are also square roots for instance. So it's certainly not a figure that we can at the moment I guess derive unless you're very good at math. But because these are square roots and those these tar FIB targets are aiming for this or these FIB retracements are aiming for this FIB target I would probably make a guess and say that it has to do something with that but I have to do some math to to, to get there. I'll let you know, okay? Cool. Let's see, how can I get the indicator of weakness and strength that you use? Yeah, let's take a look at that, actually. We didn't do that already yet. You can uh, send me an email. Just uh, drop a uh, the subject, which email, uh, I mean, which indicator, sorry, you would like to have. Okay, and I can send it to you, no problem. Let's take a look at that, actually. Now we're talking about it anyhow, about that strength of weakness indicator. See if there's some pairs that I missed that are perhaps interesting. Let's take a look here. On the hourly dollar, indeed, taking a lift. Yen 2, CAD weakening. Swiss weakening, Euro weakening,
Alrighty. 15 minute chart. Euro dollar. Euro obviously weakening. For those that maybe remember, sometimes you say if you see an impulse like that, if it's, if you if you're a bit too late, just wait for the retracement on a five 50 minute chart and try to catch the next break. I think that would be applicable for now if the four hour candle closes indeed strongly. Unfortunately, uh, anyone who, like myself who didn't take the break here, I think that's the only solution at the moment to wait for the retracement. Uh, the euro dollar, I was expecting downside to 112.50 potentially, but not that much through 112.50, so I was not really looking for shorts below L3, but I think the euro yen would have been a good trade to the downside if, uh, if spotted on time. But anyhow, uh, at the moment, obviously it kind of shows the euro weakness, Swiss weakness, but as I said, those perhaps are the, the strongest and the weakest but it's a bit difficult to trade at the moment, so I would wait for the retracement. Let's see if maybe there's another combination. Swiss and dollar. What is this? New Zealand. And this is yen. So let's take a look at the dollar, Swiss, and New Zealand dollar. That's my cat, by the way. Doesn't agree with what I'm saying. Ah, more negative interest rates. Yeah, that's definitely something that uh, puts a uh, a different perspective on things, I think, and shifts kind of the paradigm uh, a bit lower. Certainly something that uh, is logical. I mean, if, if, if they are potentially going into negative territory, which seem to be the bottom at the moment, then obviously that... Uh, puts another spin on things because there could be even more euro downside than expected. So that does explain a lot about the momentum because as I said, typically you don't see that big of a candle, 80, 70 pip candle so early in the London session. More maybe 20, 30, and then it could be easily a fake out. But if it's this big, the fake out chance is drastically uh, changing or decreasing. Anyhow, let's go to uh, Kiwi and Dollar Swiss and the CCI. I, I've heard that it's very good. Uh, I've heard good things about it. Personally, I don't use it at the moment, but uh, I've just used the MACD. But I can only tell you that that basically what I've heard from others and that, that they found it useful. But I think uh, two traders. I mean, it's not a, a very huge sample group, obviously. So, I mean, it, it depends. Let's take a look how it's looking. Showing a bit of divergence between these tops. So I guess like everything, of course, you have to get a bit of a feeling for yourself, but I I did hear I did hear good things about it. But I I don't know, I'm so used to the oscillator, awesome oscillator, and I don't see much value into adding something that looks so similar in a way, so that's why. Alrighty, Kiwi. Yeah, true, Justinus, it's really a lot of drop indeed. Definitely, it's not the typical reaction or expectation or, uh, sorry, it's not a typical response to a news expectation indeed. Kiwi. Was bearish, but does have a bullish kind of um, reaction to to the drop, and is now rechallenging this bottom. So it's a bit of a peculiar situation at the moment, where we do have a downside, but 
it's you know reaching a strong kind of support level plus strong engulfing twins here that looks more like a buying opportunity than a shorting opportunity to me right because we have a, a clear level either below this daily bottom here 7320 or below the engulfing twins at 7345 those could be stop losses so clear support levels where we can put the stop loss plus a lot of potential to the upside because if this is a zigzag then price could make a rally up to 76.25 so we got about a 225 potential and a 60 risk or a 80 risk no yeah. or maybe even a 50 risk So that looks like a good R2R to the upside. So there's more potential to the upside. That outweighs the the risk here. I think the reward to risk outweighs the potential uh, loss percentage here for upside. Oh, and then the last but not least. Dollar Swiss C. Also, just like the euro dollar, breaking kind of to the H5 here, so it's a bit the same story. It's challenging the weekly high already. Ultimately, the upside here seems a bit weaker than the euro downside because the euro downside has space. Dollar Swiss upside does not have much space, I think, looking at the levels of resistance that are very, very near to it. So I, I think the euro dollar downside, if it does post that bearish candle has after retracement, could have good follow through. The dollar Swiss seems a bit shakier. So Kiwi and euro dollar seem more interesting. Um, Kiwi to the upside, your dollar probably to the downside, but then when it does reach 111 to the upside, pound to the downside after the news event, but if it reaches 155, then potential bouncing spot to the upside. Uh, pound yen, I would say, has, has good potential to the downside, as we discussed, and it is pushing through that support level after the news event, perhaps. Uh, the Dolly and to the upside after the retracement down to 111, 119.50, sorry. This is the Australian dollar. I'm not sure if we talked about it, but it has kind of a rising wedge pattern on the daily chart, but it is still at support. Anywhere here at 79.50, 79 mark could easily be still a, a bouncing spot for upside. This particular spot right now is a bouncing spot. It has a pin bar at the trend line, but we don't know if it's going to really bounce or not. So a stop loss below 70, 78.80 is still needed, though. You, I mean, a trader could go with a stop loss below this 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 candle low here, but um, it's tighter and a bit riskier. What else did we discuss? Let's see. Your odd pound out are not that interesting at the moment. Pound is in downside could be interesting after news event. Especially if we retrace it just a bit higher here. I think that's it so far. Gold. Let's take a look here. I didn't take a look at gold in a, before after the uh, my break, so let me take a quick look here. Yep, 
Now, it looks bearish uh, for the moment. I mean, it's obviously had a good bullish impulse, but that seems to be over. So we could see some retracement to retest uh, perhaps one, uh, one 1,200. WTI, I unfortunately can't see that one at the moment. I uh, hope, actually, I was, what I, I think I actually opened an account. Now I forgot about it. I did it before the, the holiday. I don't remember. But I was about to, so I could look at um, the indices as well. I'm not sure what happened with that, actually. Maybe I, maybe I forgot about it. I'll, have to, I'll look into it. So thanks so much for joining. We'll have... Tomorrow, the same webinar, probably zooming in a bit to uh, lower time frames, maybe, than today. We're going to take a look at strategy tomorrow, same time, same place. Uh, Netted is going to take a look at news trading, simplified. And uh, on Thursday, Netted and I are going to take a look at candlesticks, how to use them as triggers for trading decisions. So uh, thanks for joining me after uh, my break. Cable. Yes. Where's my cable? There. Yes, looks bearish at the moment indeed. I mean, definitely a good one-hour candle. Let's see what the news event brings. But uh, a retracement and then down would seem likely to 155, which is a bouncing spot. And I would, 155, 155, 50, sorry, indeed. And I would say the best would be until price is showing some reaction to it. Some candles, some price action reaction or some time factor reaction, for instance, because it's just the beginning of the day. Uh, if let's say we have some downside, let's say we have two candles down still. And then we have one, two candles up. And then we have three more candles down. And it's the end of London. Uh, then I would like to buy more. Also, if we have then one, two, three, and then four, five candles not breaking this bottom, it'd also be a good buy. So today seems, to, but my point is that today could be an intraday bearish pressure. Depending on the news event, um, and dep depending on that it doesn't break this 156.75, if it does break above it, then the rules have changed probably. So if it stays below it, then today could be an intraday downside pressure with 155, 155.50 as a target, and then um, that could be the turning spot for this week's upside. And the best, I, I would say, timing of such a long could be at just at like at the end of London or at uh, after London. Because then a tighter stop loss can be used. Because if we do a pending order at 155, 155.50, it's possible, but we're not sure at this moment how much it can fall. Sometimes price pushes through a bit further. So a stop loss, a wider stop loss would have to be used. In that case, if a market order is used, and the stop loss would have to be below last week's low at 153.70.67. If a react, if you wait for a reaction to that level, then you can, I think, use a tighter stop loss. All right, th folks, thank you so much, and. Uh, Wish you happy hunting and I hope to see you tomorrow. Cheers.